Well, John Henry, I think the people in Austin run him out, you know, and we let him come to Madisonville. That is our second mistake, but somebody had to take him in. And uh, J.R. Pardon told him he had a good lake over there, and he'd, he'd make him manager of this lake. And he said, well, he never seen the lake. And need somebody that fishes over there pretty regular to show me around. And so I was the one that was elected to go with him to the lake. And I carried him over there fishing one day. It was in the spring of the year, and these water marks had just come out, you know, and laying these little bud and willow trees grow out over the lake, and those big old moccasins laying up in under there. And John Henry was sitting on the middle, and I was running the boat, and I run it up in under some of them bushes. And this old water moccasin fell out in the boat, and when it did, John Henry come on wound then. And I just stepped out of the boat and headed for the land. He hollered, wait, P. Ryan said, don't leave me here with this snake. I said, well, John Henry, this is that time you heard about when three is a crowd. Uh, yeah. Well, John Henry, John Henry was always involved in something. When he seen somebody being mistreated or seen some big corporation trying to force some little man into something that he didn't think was right, well, John Henry was up taking his side in it. He, he's always been for the working man. The Trinity River Authority, they come through, they was trying to put a canal all the way from that Houston, uh, Houston to Dallas and Fort Worth up there cost billions of dollars. You know, it wouldn't serve any purpose at all. It was just something that that the Trent River Authority thought of to get a lot of the taxpayers' money. Well, John Henry built it there. A bunch of wealthy businessmen up in Dallas and Fort Worth who mostly Republicans that cuss out the government's interference, you know, and the government throwing money around and giving to a bunch of no-count folks, just giving our tax money away. These same birds would get on an airplane, fly all the way up to Washington to lobby Congress to provide millions and millions and millions of dollars for them to canalize the Trinity River, which is a magnificent river. Well, we had two railroads over here run from Houston to Dallas and Fort Worth, and they didn't have enough freight to support those railroads. They discontinued one of them, took them up, and, and there's no taxes on water freight. These trucks, all these trucks hauling freight over the highway, they pay three or $4,000 a year road taxes. He got a bunch of people to go along with him, you know, and he fought them to a standstill. Are you just more concerned about him being put out of office than who is the actual? No, I can't think <laughs> of a crowning joy of my life, nor of a sixth congressional district like me going to Congress to represent the good souls down here. Indeed. No? What do you I feel love is the main issue here, Mr. Paul? I think there are two main issues. Number one, Reaganomics and what it's doing to the elderly, the, what the attacks that Phil Graham has made on our social uh, security programs with a sledgehammer and battered them down. He had a sledgehammer up there pounding on these social programs, social security, and he's no friend of yours. That's what I'm doing in this race. Because I'm 69 years old and over 100,000 people in our 6th Congressional District right here where you are depend on Social Security. And about half of that many have, that's the only income they have is their Social Security. And that's what that bunch up in Washington, Ronald Reagan and Phil Graham have been cutting on. They say take it out of your hides, take it out of programs just like this, this nutrition program. Because remember this, when Phil Graham stands up and says, I represent the best interest of the people of the 6th Congressional District. It's about like a big old possum laying up in a hen house <laughs> claiming I represent the Poultryman's Association in this section. We gotta give the Lord a hand and help ourselves too, you know. He's yes, sir. Do our share. Don't get out of here. 
Thank you, sir. You are there. Thank you for letting us be here. Okay. Okay. I'm running with Tommy. Right. Room and there were about two dozen little children, all under six. Cutest children you ever saw, all from poverty homes, and uh, they were all taking a nap. Oh. And they. Uh, Ready, Jim? Here we go. Oh, it'll never come up, boys. It's there forever now. <laughs> what about our posterity? You reflect on the last time you heard a leader of the United States, of either party, discussing posterity and our obligation to posterity, or our concern for posterity for that matter. And what is happening in Austin, Texas, is these brutal, manipulating money corporations. They're not people, you understand. A corporation isn't a person. As Peabody and Jeffrey said, it has no, it has no uh, heart to fill nor no behind to kick. <laughs> well, a corporation is a faceless thing that lives entirely for profit. And it can't consider the human factor involved as it greedily devours the earth as it destroys the society. TMPA, Texas Municipal Power Association, they come down there in Grimes County and they wanted to build this lignite plant. And the people down there didn't want to sell their land. They didn't want no lignite plant. They wanted this land that they'd had all, all their life. So John Henry, he, he got it with the group and they formed a concerned citizen group. I'm Jake Howard. A rancher from Grimes County, and I've been raised here on this property. And ranched in Grimes and adjoining counties. Do that for a living. But this spot right here is where I always wanted to build my home, and still hope to. And. I guess that's that's one of the reasons that it hurt me so much or to think that I would someone just come in here and just take it away from me, even if he didn't want to give it up. He he'd answer all my questions and told me just like it was and said they was gonna build a power plant and a lignite fired power plant. They needed our property to for the lake, for the lake site, and he uh, said they they wanted it, and had to have it, and was gonna intended to have it, and I told him well, he didn't have enough money. There wasn't no way in the world, but we would, or I would part with the property at all. They couldn't pay me enough, or it just wasn't for sale at any price. And he said, well, says, you, uh, you may well face the facts. Says, you can either sell it to us and we'll be friends or we're going to take it away from you and we'll be enemies. So that's just the size of it. I had heard uh, Mr. John Henry Falk on the radio on the deal with the Trinity River authorities, the canal on the Trinity River. So one day my neighbor and I, we was feeding cows or going through Madisonville and I found out where he lived so I stopped at his house to talk to him. I was working one day and I come up, my wife came out and said there's a couple of hippies out there, long haired hippies in the front yard and they want to see you and I've told them that you are very busy but they said it's rather urgent and I said well honey tell them that I can't do a thing in the world. I figured they had a song you know that they wanted to promote. And then I looked out, and there was Jake Howard looking in that, in that kind of wild Bill Hillcock fashion of his off across the treetops. He's such a wonderful guy that I went out just to shake his hand, tell him I couldn't do anything for him, you know, couldn't get his song played. And it turned out that wasn't what he wanted at all, that a terrible scheme had been brought to fruition down in Grimes County called the Texas Municipal Power Agency, and that they had been endowed by the Texas legislature with the power to confiscate land by eminent domain of those ranchers there, and they were going to strip mine the land for this, the benefit of some 
big uh, public utility companies in Dallas, and they'd hired their hired hand down here, Senator Bill Moore, who would, for a price, practically do anything. He was a state senator at the time. And they had old Moore run through this Texas Municipal Power Agency, which set up a kind of a municipal agency that wouldn't pay any taxes, you see, but would have the power of eminent domain that could confiscate their land. And I said, well, Jake, there couldn't be anything like that. This is impossible. He said, yes, sir, they're setting up in Grimes County, and they're going to take our land. And then they ain't going to pay no taxes on it either. And the school district down there are concerned because take a lot of the school land and take it off the tax rolls. Mr. John Henry, he, his theory is a fact that there just certain people make a lot of money out of a out of a project like this. The taxpayer, the taxpayer, and the people uh, paying taxes are the ones that actually pay for this. But there's always a few people that know what's going to happen ahead of time, and they set the thing up, and they they make a big lot of money out of it, which is, I think that this has happened on this day right here in Grimes County. It's just hard to believe some of the things that go on. And to get someone to stand up and to buck these people and that will call the hand on it, is that's what I say we need in Congress or anywhere else in, in the, the, to make a good place out of the, this country to live in. That's the one they was going to put over in Washington County, and they were going to let them put it over there. Uh, well, yeah. all right. but they're putting it over in Grimes County. That's Tristan right over here. Come in, Tristan. No, come here. That's, that's Mr. Harris. Yeah, yeah, this is Buckholz here. Hello, Mr. Buckholz. How are you? Glad to see you. How are you doing, man? What you all here down here? Well, I think you're going to be in the runoff. I sure hope we can get that man in a runoff. If I get him in a runoff, I'll operate on him without no anesthesia. <laughs> get 30 days. If we had more people like John Henry that would oppose those big corporations like that when they come up with something like that, well, then they, up here in Leon County, they wanted to put a low level waste dump for this, <coughs> excuse me, this nuclear energy, you know. Well, and they was going to store it above ground up there. And those containers were leaking, even at the place they, they was going to move them from. They were already leaking, and they were storing them above ground. And if, if this waste leaks out and goes down in the ground, gets in your aquifer, your water is polluted then. Every, every, every place south of there would have polluted water. Well, they, he got... Uh, bunched together and they opposed that and got it stopped which is a good thing you don't there's no such a thing as low level waste in that nuclear energy john henry is a real friend of ours in leon county we were in trouble here about two and a half years ago with this nuclear waste uh storage here in leon county and john henry came came up and stood up with us, fought against this nuclear waste here in Leon County, 
and also he went to Austin with us to fight with us. And fortunately, we've, we were able to have a bill passed and Austin made some strong restrictions on the nuclear waste. At this time, we don't, we don't, we don't have the nuclear waste here. But we feel like the fight is still on and, and I feel like that John Henry will continue to fight with us uh, when we call him. And so, not only myself, I think a lot of John Henry, uh, we have a lot of friends in Madison County and all around us that knows John Henry will stand up for us again if we need to fight to protect our children, our grandchildren, for their safety uh, here in Leon County. And the biggest danger is our water level is so shallow and uh, if the nuclear waste get in our drinking water, well, it's going to be a da great danger to us. And so we're going to continue to fight it. And as uh, long as we can fight it legally, we're going to continue our, our fight. No one in Texas is running on a platform that deals with the matter of nuclear holocaust. And as you know, the administration of Reagan is, is advocating this idiotic nuclear war business, limited nuclear war business. And to me, it is utterly terrifying that we, the American people, are not demanding that a dialogue be opened on the peril that all humankind finds itself in now. Now, I ran on that, and I discussed that in my campaign, and I found out that the people were interested, and this didn't cause a, a rejection. You see, the curse of America today is a fulfillment of Eisenhower's prediction that the, or foreboding that the industrial military complex would take over this society and obliterate it, or end up by obliterating the republic as we know it. Why, it's criminal insanity to talk of limited nuclear war. What do you limit it to? Well, just a minute, we just killed a million. We'll have to call this war off now. There's a million people. That's as far as we wanted to go with war. We've just killed a million, so let's stop it. It's a kind of idiocy they're talking. And unless we can turn it around, it'll be as George Kistiakowsky said. It'll be as Harold Urey said. <laughs> we won't reach the 20th century. These were eminent nuclear physicists. This is my main reason for running for Congress. If I could just open a dialogue, if I could just add my voice to the chorus of people that want to see the human species survive, I would feel that I'd at least carried out part of my obligation to this republic. You bet, I think John Henry would make a good congressman. I sure do, because he, he's always taking up and fighting somebody's battle for him, helping him. He'll, uh, I have on several occasions seen John Henry help people, and when he didn't have the time, I've heard him say he didn't have the time being in his home when he had got phone call, people wanting him to help him do something, and he would talk to them and tell them he'd help them, and, after they'd hang up, he said, boy, I just sure don't have the time to do that. I said, I'm, I said I've just got to help the, that old boy. Or, I said, I, so that, I feel like that kind of man that, uh, that will take his time and not do what he really should be doing to benefit himself, but he'll go and help. He'll help another man rather than Race. doing for herself. I don't know what will be the results, but I'll always feel good about what I did. I've done, I've said to the people what I wanted to say to them on every issue that I felt was important. And uh, I'm very saddened by the prospect of the 6th Congressional District being bought and paid for by a man with millions of dollars behind him. I think this is a sad commentary, a very sad commentary on our society. Beyond that, I don't, you understand, I don't concede nothing to this man at all. I don't know whether he's won or not. I hope he hasn't. I think I, I would consider a victory of Phil Graham a real tragedy for the 6th Congressional District, but more than that, a tragedy for the people of Texas.